The lines are drawn. Flameheart or Pendragon? Resurrection or Redemption? When this trailer for the new Sea of Thieves adventure first dropped, I was firmly on the side of saving Pendragon. He's our beloved mustache boy. He's been a rare character for over 30 years and has featured in multiple games and is now a Sea of Thieves fan favorite. He stood up to Jack Sparrow and he helped save the seas from Davy Jones and he has stood up for the forces of good many times before. I genuinely felt really upset about this new adventure because the prospect of losing Pendragon was very sad to me. But after giving it much thought, I've changed my mind. After fighting for Reapers at Golden Sands, I thought I could firmly stand by Athena's fortune. The seas are a beauty, and I don't want to see them shrouded in fog. But this isn't like Golden Sands. It was our first community choice, and many just wanted to see what would happen if we blew the thing up. But this time, I think the personal stakes are so much higher. Many are spelling doom and gloom for the entire storyline if Flameheart is bound away, and I don't necessarily think this is true. I am pretty confident the Reaper's Bones will still move on with their plans with or without Flameheart at the helm. The reconstruction of Golden Sands has shown that the story's progression doesn't need the Reapers to always win. There are many characters who also work for the Reapers, and they can easily make more if they need them. I promise you, there will be future adventures with the Reaper's involvement, even if Flameheart isn't there. But the way I see it, this choice changes how Flameheart or Pendragon will be involved in those adventures. We can either see Pendragon still around and saving the day like usual, but with a redemption arc, or finally allowing this multi-year tease of a skeleton lord we've all been dying to see. Ultimately, the other crew's actions will determine whether it's Flameheart or Pendragon, who will be standing tall on the Sea of Thieves in the months ahead. Pendragon will likely be seen as a hero of the seas, the champion of souls who saved the seas from the return of Captain Flameheart. But this will allow the Dark Brethren, helmed by the infamous Captain, to lay their grip further into the seas. Flameheart is in direct competition with not just Athena's fortune, but multiple other factions in the ultimate struggle for power on the seas right now. With his leadership gone, those other factions will take bolder moves in their pursuit of total control. You know who else wants total control of the seas? The Grand Maritime Union. The Sovereigns are clearly here to stay, and have won over the good graces of captains everywhere. They bring ease to our hard lives at sea, but at the cost of our freedoms. Mark my words, it won't be long before we see more of these prim and proper folk arriving on the outposts. Capitalism is everywhere, folks. The Pirate Lord, for all the good he's done and represents, is complacent to take action on the aristocrats. The Union and Reapers see themselves in direct opposition, as the Captain himself had a pretty bad run-in with officers of the Grand Maritime Union during his life before death. I believe in no king, but if he can prevent the Union's claws from getting in the shroud just a bit longer, I count that as a win. Ultimately, I feel Pendragon has had his time to shine. He will always be around and pass tall tales to guide players through the revival of Flameheart. Well, some of it. I do think some of these adventures should be tall tales, but that's a different video. As things stand, we need someone to truly shake up the seas, give the captain his time to truly shine. We've been teased this character for over six years, since E3 2016. There are many characters who have relationships with Flameheart, and we need to see those established and fleshed out more. Case in point, his own son. It's not exactly controversial to say that the Servant of the Flame, Flameheart Jr., is one note. He's quite boring, just having the motivation to serve his father and nothing else. There's so much potential with this one singular character to flesh him out in a million different ways with his past with the Captain and plenty of other areas of the Sea of Thieves lore. But they haven't delivered on any of it. If his own father, Captain Flameheart, comes back, we will surely get some development between the two to flesh out their relationship. The Reapers are some of the coolest video game villains through their aesthetics alone, but their characters need much more time to shine. Story-wise, think about how this will even affect the Athena's Fortune characters. We all thought Merrick dying would be much more of a loss than it ended up being, as being a ghost in the Sea of Thieves actually has its own benefits. With an actual, tangible loss under their belt with Pendragon being banished away, it could add a lot of depth to their characters as well, seeing how they react to this tragic situation. Ultimately, I think it'll lead to a much more interesting story. Don't allow his legacy to just be an annoying bobblehead in the sky. Don't rob us the chance to see him in action after all this time. Go out there and lay claim to some sea forts in the name of Flameheart, even if you don't agree with the ideology. And I'm not just saying all this because I bought and read two books about the guy. 
Thanks for watching, pirates, and I'll see you on the seas.